We've traveled to over 17 countries and 34 cities in the last 14 months. We've learned a lot since our first packing video. So let's dive in, show you how we pack, what we pack, and why we no longer care about certain things. We'll also show you how our suitcases are building up after a year of full-time travel. Welcome back to Finding Jean Marie, where we share our lives with full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. We aren't sponsored by Briggs & Riley, but after being blown away by their bags after several months of use, we recommend them and make a small amount of money if you use our links to shop on their website. These are the ZDX 22-inch domestic spinner carry-on suitcases. We think you'll like them as much as we do, which is why we're talking about them today. So let's start with the outside of the suitcase. There's a pouch here that you can use to store things. This is not zippered or anything, so it's good for if you're carrying a magazine or something that's casual through the airport. I don't use it too much, but once in a while, it comes in really handy. There's a zipper pouch in the exterior. That's great for our important paperwork. Everything we have is digital except for some key items that you just can't get rid of, like some security cards, other things. And we keep those in a fire safe, waterproof pouch, and that is what I store in here. At the top of the suitcase, there's a small zipper pouch. In there, I store the lock that I use for locking the suitcase when it's not being locked. And also there's a strap that can hook on the suitcase and carry another suitcase by a handle in case it doesn't have a pass through. So inside the main flap, there's a top section that you can see through, which is nice because I have extra masks in there. And I also have some in our backpack. And I have a little straw accessory, which goes for my water bottle in case the straw inside it breaks. This is my extra. In this pouch, I don't have anything, but it's great if you have some last minute stuff you need to stick in your suitcase. Briggs & Riley also has the hard-sided clamshells type suitcases, but we found that soft side works better for us, and these light tops fit really well in tight situations. Some Airbnbs don't keep you much room next to the beds, and this just lifts up and sits against the wall, which is perfect for us. Speaking of fitting, one of the nice features about this suitcase is that it's compressible. Sometimes you need to put a little bit more in your suitcase, and that's why you'd expand it. Let's say I have a jacket that I'm not wearing on the flight, so I want to put it in my suitcase. Once the suitcase is unzipped, you actually get to lift up the top portion of it. And now I have more space at the top. Put my jacket in, close the top. Zips around very nicely. And then I just compress the whole suitcase. All right, back to the nice Small size that fits great in overhead compartments. All right, let's see what I pack in here. Obviously, sometimes a jacket goes in. The inside is clipped in. Unclip those. On the top of my suitcase, I have a blanket. This is Merino wool blanket from Wool Ant. It's very nice, very warm, very comfortable. It also dries quickly if we have to wash it. Things get dirty. I need a laundry bag. We try to do our laundry as often as possible. And we have some tricks with wool clothing that keeps us from having to do a lot of you. We'll talk about that in a little bit. In Japan, Judy and I got new eyeglasses. So I have my old pair stuck in the suitcase just in case. It's nice to have a backup. And they also have in the suitcase a bag with an Apple TV in it. May seem excessive, but a lot of our content is on Apple. And this is just a really nice way to plug into wherever we are and watch our shows. And it fits pretty conveniently in my suitcase. So. I don't mind having it long. And I use packing cubes for packing for a lot of reasons. One of which is when you're in an airport and you need to break down your bag because they tell you, take everything out, let us look at it. These make it very quick and easy to pull things out and put them all back in without having to spread all your clothes around the airport. I use these from Gomadic, Nomadic, depends on what country you're in. And I try to organize my clothes by type so I know where things are. This is my underwear and socks. In this one, I have my short sleeve shirts and t-shirts. And under those, I keep some other items that are a little harder, like our first aid kit. And that contains pills we may need, um, some ointments in case we get mosquito bites, other things like that. This is not something most people have in their cases, but I have a whiskey review channel called Whiskey Riffs. So in this container are two mini Glencairn glasses so I can actually drink whiskey and do reviews. 
not your usual carry. And while we're traveling, dental hygiene is really important. Between dentist visits, we try to make sure we keep our teeth clean with a dental kit like this. Another essential is a toiletry kit. This is mine. It's from Nomadic. It contains all my toiletries, including my electric razor, hairbrush, deodorant. I take a Claritin every day, so that's my pills. And then some little pouch. I have some hair product that's powder, so I don't have to worry about liquids on the security checks. It also has some nice pouches on it. This one contains my toothbrush. Keeps it separate from everything else in case it's damp. And this pouch has nail clippers, <laughs> nose hair clippers, and all the things that you want to keep separate but easily accessible. Another less common carry is a scale. Now we try to watch our health, take care of ourselves. I'm 60 plus, so I want to make sure that everything's going well. It's very light, it's digital, it tracks with our phones. And this towel is actually a big old beach towel that we haven't used at the beach yet but it's also great to use as a towel with the apartment. It doesn't have enough towels, so it dries well and it resists sand. And it's also something you can take along and spread out and have a picnic in the park. Onto another packing cube. This one holds my trousers and shorts. And I also have a couple belts in here that work well for me too. And I'll break down everything that's in my cubes in just a minute. My last cube actually has my shirts in here. And in case I need to carry an extra pair of shoes, which I don't right now, I have a shoe bag just in case so the dirty bottoms don't get on any of my other clothing. So that's everything that's in my suitcase. Now I'll break down my cubes. One of the things we learned after all these months of travel is that not every Airbnb has a lot of counter space, especially in the bathrooms. Sometimes there's no place to put your toiletries. That's why our toiletry bags have hangers. There might be a towel bar, there might be something that you can just hook it over, and this has become essential for us. When we started out, I bought these compression cubes because I wanted to make sure that everything was as small and tight as possible in our suitcases. And sometimes that's a really good thing, especially if I'm using my backpack only. These compression cubes go down pretty darn small. And that's very nice. But we've learned that sometimes it's better to leave everything a little bit decompressed in the suitcase so that when you compress the suitcase itself, everything has room to fit its own spaces. So now I rarely do this, but it's still nice to have the compression bags because like I said, if I need to stick this in my backpack, it is better to have it slimmer. One of the things that I've learned over these months of travel is that I was wrong about a certain type of fabric. I thought wool was heavy, scratchy, uncomfortable, and just not something you want to own. So I was always using cotton. Turns out, Wool is really great. <laughs> Merino wool especially. This shirt's wool, this shirt's wool, this shirt's wool, and a lot of my other stuff is wool because it's antimicrobial. In the cold climates, it gives me a little extra warmth. And in the warm climates, it gives me some cool breeze coming through the shirt. So it breathes really well. And I like collared shirts. So the fact that I can have a collared shirt that keeps me cool and warm is wonderful. They also can be washed and dried very easily. You don't put these in the dryer, you just let them air dry and they dry quicker than any other product I've ever worn. All mine come from Woolen Prints. They're not sponsoring us, but we do have affiliate links on our site and that would help us if you want to click on those. This shirt is actually a long sleeve shirt and I have two other long sleeve shirts that are not wool. I would like to replace those cotton ones with wool shirts like this one because this is going to last a lot longer and we don't have to wash these every single time we wear them. For short sleeve shirts, I have the one I'm wearing. I've got another colored short sleeve shirt, and I've got a Woolen Prince t-shirt, which has been very nice also. There are some legacy t-shirts that I still own and carry around with me, but they're really for just hanging around and not going out anywhere. I'd rather replace these two with one more Wool and Prince Merino Wool shirt. And then I have some sleep shorts. I showed this jacket off in the beginning. I was showing off the suitcase compression. This is actually Wool and Prince also and has worked out really well for me because it's not as hot as my old bicycle jacket was. That biking jacket kind of had a, a waterproof barrier or something that just made me hot. This is comfortable in the warm weather and the cold weather, and it's just perfect for me. All right, this cube has more shirts in it, but these are my legacy shirts, the ones that I actually want to replace. I have two more short sleeve shirts, and again, I want to get rid of these and replace them with one wool shirt because they wear better. And then I have two more long sleeve shirts. Again, these are cotton, not as good for washing and drying. They take forever to dry, 
and very few Airbnbs have dryers. I'm trying to get rid of them. And lastly, I have a bathing suit, which someday I might actually use. We haven't been to any beaches that I've swam in in a full year, but maybe someday. In this cube, I have my underwear and socks. I have six pairs of wool underwear, which is antimicrobial, dries quickly, all the same benefits of having the shirts. And I have some darn tough socks, which are also wool. Uh, most of them are light socks for walking around. I have one pair of hiking socks that we used one time in Australia, so I kept them with me. And I have a few legacy socks, which are dress socks, but will stop sweat. And for my last compression cube, this holds my pants. Now I have two belts that I use occasionally when it's probably colder weather and I need to tuck my shirt, stay warmer. And I have two long pants, trousers. They are lighter material. I got rid of jeans early on in our process because traveling with jeans is extra heavy. They don't dry well. They just cause more trouble than they're worth. So I bought some very light, more uh, athletic type slacks. Those have been working great. I have a couple pair of shorts, one that I'm wearing, and another pair here. I also have a third pair that I've had for a while that I don't wear as often. They're a little heavier, but they're hiking shorts. I keep them around because, you know, shorts wear out. So it's nice to have a backup. And something else I'm wearing are my walking shoes, which I like so much that I actually bought another pair when we went back to the U.S. because my first pair was getting worn out a little bit. I didn't want them to wear it anymore while we were traveling. And I knew we weren't going to be back in the U.S. for a while. So I got a second pair of the Saucony men's walking shoes. And they've been great. A lot of uh, comfort in them, easy on hard surfaces. Can't complain about them at all. And everything we pack and all the gear that we're using is on our website, on a gear guide list. And we also have articles that Judy's been writing to detail the reasons why we bought a lot of this stuff. So check out findgmail.com to get all the details. When we bought our suitcases, Briggs and Riley only had this version in black and the green that Kevin has. Black's okay, it just is everywhere. And so I bought a handle that helps it to be distinguished from all the sea of black ones that are out there. And Briggs and Riley is different enough that it's easily distinguished from some of the other kinds as well. Uh, now they sell it in an ocean color. So you have a little bit more selection than we had. And just like Kevin, I don't keep anything in this pouch uh, permanently. But what I do like to do is to put everything back in the same place every single time. So in my first pocket, I have a notebook and lab company laundry sheets. And these are really convenient. You can even use them when you're hand washing things. You can use a half strip or a full strip. It doesn't have any dyes or perfumes. Sometimes Airbnbs will have detergent for you, but I know that we're not allergic to these and they don't really take up that much space. And I also keep a little bit of paperwork in here. I have some medical records from Kevin's surgery in Serbia. And in this small pouch, I like to keep the lock that I use and it just kind of snaps in here. It's very convenient. And I also have some pens that I keep in a Ziploc just because sometimes pens leak. So let's see what we have inside. In this pouch with the mesh, I keep some eyeglass cleaners, which have been really great. There are times you just need a vegetable peeler and this one works great. A lot of Airbnbs don't carry them and it doesn't take up any space and it's never been stopped through security. I still am carrying an apron. When you have a limited amount of clothes, it's convenient to be able to have a full-sized apron and you don't have to worry about staining or ruining any clothes while you're cooking and having grease splatters. I like the way this suitcase compresses and I also like that there's a little lip here that allows me to just kind of hold this open so I don't have to have it get lost in my suitcase. I've had problems with that a lot. I don't know if you do, but is a problem for me sometimes. I have a makeup case and keep my essentials in it. This is my largest compression bag. And like Kevin, I don't typically keep it compressed, but I can if I need to. This one has all of my warm weather clothes. This compression cube is for all of my underwear and a few other things. This medium sized packing cube is what I keep for all of my cold weather clothes. I also have a laundry bag. In our previous video, I used to have a curling iron and a round brush. 
and I've since gotten rid of both of those and instead I've swapped it for a Revlon all-in-one. It's a European device that works internationally almost everywhere and then I keep it with a adapter that is for American plugs. It didn't come this way but I keep the bristle part in a pouch just to keep it from poking or digging at the packing cubes or if I'm having to reach in I don't poke myself. And I like that it goes together very easily and then it's one long thing but it packs nice and small for storage. I carry two pairs of shoes and I wear a third pair. When you're doing as much walking as we are, it's important that your shoes are comfortable. So I swapped out my original pair for the ones that I'm wearing. Those are Hoka's and they're Clifton Nines and they are like walking on a cloud. They're light weight, but they're super comfortable and they're black so they go with everything but i also have a pair of sneakers and these are vages these are great for summer or just wanting to look a little bit more polished than maybe the rugged look of the hokas i also have a spare pair of eyeglasses we got them replaced in japan if you're interested in knowing more about how that turned out leave us a note in the comments although we do a lot of cooking on the road we don't typically bring a lot of spices. I have just a few that I carry with us. I like things spicy, so I've got chili peppers, and I also have a couple of bouillon cubes that are just left over. This is my last packing cube, and it has things like a bathing suit and a jacket. I also carry sandals with me. These are towels and they're convenient, again, in warm weather climates. We're getting down to the bottom. I like to cook, but I don't love to cook so much that I need everything from scratch for each meal. So I like to cook enough for two or three meals and then I can store them in Ziplocs and they come in an assortment of sizes and they've been wonderful and they're washable. We don't carry anything like measuring spoons or measuring cups and this allows us to cook a little bit easier on occasions where maybe we need more precise measurements. And the last thing that I carry is a puffy jacket that I bought ages ago from Australia. I only keep it because it's very light and it doesn't take up very much room in our suitcase. So as I mentioned, I just have a bathing suit and then also a moto jacket. I just got it before we went to Japan and the moto jacket is from Woolland Company. I have been obsessed with wool for the last six months after learning about all of its incredible features. Not all wool is the same, even if it's called merino wool. After buying at least a dozen pieces of clothing and seeing these benefits for ourselves, we now earn a small commission if you use our links. If you've worn wool and haven't been impressed, consider trying Wool and or their men's line, Wool and Prints. They're the only wool brands we recommend. You can pack fewer clothes and not need to wash them during a two week trip, even in hot weather. This is where I keep my underwear and I mentioned that I had a few other things in there. We recently bought some bands for exercising and for stretching. Definitely feeling that it's important for us to have some uh, exercise while we're traveling. We also have a couple of Blissey pillowcases that are queen size. They're very nice, they're comfortable. Sometimes they have very rough pillowcases at some of the Airbnbs that we're in, or they're pilled, whatever. Sometimes they're thin. These are made from washable silk and they're really nice, especially for frizzy hair like I. I have. I also have a spare bra. I have three pairs of darn tough socks that are black and I have four pairs of white socks which are just regular. The darn tough I like they have a lifetime guarantee so if you get holes in them they will replace them free so that's pretty nice. These are all of my summer clothes and I'll go through them pretty quickly. All of the information will be in our gear list so you could look at them in more detail. All of my dresses and shirts are very lightweight. They feel like I'm almost not wearing anything so they're nice and breezy. They're super comfortable and I like the fact that they wash so easily and I can sweat in them, let them air out, and I can wear them the next day and I don't have to worry about them smelling or anything else. So I have three sleeveless dresses. I have a dress with cap sleeves. These are bike shorts and I wear them under my dresses just for modesty and also I can wear them to exercise in or if I need to sleep in them. So I have two of them, one wearing one and here's the other. I have two rip skirts and that's for when I'm wearing tops. These are great because they fold up, they don't wrinkle, they have really deep pockets. My wool has pockets but not as deep so if I'm taking a bike ride or something like that I'll wear these with my bike shorts underneath. I have a v-neck shirt 
and a crew neck shirt. This is a longer shirt that has elbow length sleeves, so I typically wear it when I'm wearing long pants. And this one is, again, cap sleeves. And that's my summer wear. When it starts to get a little bit chilly, these are the clothes that I wear. I have one long sleeve shirt, and that goes great when I'm wearing it with cargo pants, which are from Athleta, and they're nice because they have a lot of pockets. I travel a lot with these when the weather gets a little bit chilly. I have one pair of woolen leggings that are great under dresses and also as loungewear. I have a variety of heavier weight dresses. The first one is sleeveless, and it's great when I wanna layer it with something, and it's super cozy, it's the heaviest weight material that I have. This is a three-quarter length sleeve dress and this is a heavier weight dress with long sleeves and it's great when the weather is really cold. We've got five quick tips for packing. Make sure that everything you pack is something you love and will wear regularly. Don't bring what you're not going to use consistently. If you need something once a month or even less, buy it when you get there. Don't pack for every contingency. Every place has shops for something you didn't bring. Don't carry a lot of valuables like jewelry. Most of the time you don't want to show off your expensive items. And the great debate, folding versus rolling. Some clothes like ours pack better folded versus rolled. If you have any polyester blends, sometimes those are easier to roll. Let us know which way you prefer in the comments. So before we get to our backpacks, I just want to let you know that what you've seen so far is everything we own. There's no off-season place for us. Our backpacks fit neatly under the seats as personal items, and our carry-ons fit very easily in the overhead bins. And even if we have to check our luggage, the backpacks still go under our seats because we don't think they deserve to go in the overhead bins. We save that for the rolling luggage. Now let's dive into our backpacks. I swapped out my PackSafe 18 liter backpack for a 20 liter Peak Design Everyday Carry. And I'm really happy with it. I like the fact that it has some hip straps and it's got a sternum strap. It has a strap that allows you to open it up here or open it up straight, which is what I'm gonna do. And it also has a section in the back exclusively for your laptop. And I have a 13 inch that I carry. We really don't get a lot of use out of it, but we're still carrying our iPad and pencil. This backpack also has a suitcase pass-through. I typically open it one side only, but I'm gonna open it up and reveal everything that I carry. It may be a little easier for you to see. I keep all of my electronics in this case. I carry all the liquids for both Kevin and I. I have a different toiletry kit than Kevin does. Mine is an Air brand, but it also has the nice feature that Kevin likes, but mine has an actual hook to hold it on top of a bar. We also carry two reusable shopping bags, and these also could work at the beach or if you're going any kind of shopping, not just groceries. At the bottom here, I have a small little jewelry case that I think I'm going to leave behind because if you've watched any of our videos, you'll see that I really only wear the same jewelry all the time. So I think my daughter will be happy to hold on to these in the meantime. We have a washcloth sized towel that you could also wash dishes with. Some Airbnbs that we've been in don't have dish towels for drying dishes. So this is really convenient for that. And it stands out with its vivid print so we don't lose it with any of the other towels or anything else in the apartment. I love PackSafe and I used to have a convertible purse that I swapped out for one that converts from a purse to a backpack. I find that I like to have both hands free and this is all of the PackSafe features that make it very safe to use. But this has been great when we're taking bike rides or day trips. It's proven to be just a bit more convenient than what my purse was. I like that these pockets are magnetic and I keep a couple of masks in them. And because you can open it from the side, it's really convenient to get my wallet out at any time. There's a zippered section that I keep a pen in and also wear your headphones. This is a wet brush. This is the only brush that I carry. And it's really nice because it doesn't pull my hair when it's wet and I use it all the time and I feel like I have less fallout by using it. I have a couple of fountain pens which is a hobby of mine. In this pouch, I have a glass nail file, tissues, mirrored compact, AirPods Pro, <laughs> chapstick, a sewing kit, hair tie, eyeglass cleaner, and little scissors that are small and they meet the requirement of under three inches. 
This backpack has two great stretchy side pockets. Uh, this one would normally hold a water bottle. I had to get rid of mine in Japan, but I'm on the lookout for something new. If you have a suggestion of a water bottle, great for traveling, I would love to hear your suggestions. And on this side, I keep an umbrella because you never know when it's gonna rain. Originally, I thought they were TSA approved. Just so you know, TSA does not approve anything. That's not what they're in business to do. TSA is only in the United States, which I learned the hard way going through Edinburgh. I still use them, but you really have to be tied into something that fits inside a Ziploc bag that is a two liter bag and it needs to zipper. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> So as I mentioned, I seriously cut down on the liquids that I'm carrying. I have a sunscreen and a moisturizer, Purell that has a spray, hair oil, CeraVe moisturizing lotion. We really like it, especially when it's cold and your skin gets really dry. I use an Aveda thickening tonic for my hair. I also use a leave-in conditioner from Aveda and I keep it in a human gear bottle, which I love. It's silicone and it has a nice protectant so you don't accidentally spill. It pours out just a little bit at a time. I'm in love with these. I have thinning hair and I can't highly recommend Rogaine enough. If you don't believe that it works, you can look at some of my earlier videos and you can definitely see that I had hair loss. I stopped carrying Rogaine thinking I didn't need it and absolutely it's a game changer for me. And I also carry a couple of different nail polishes. Anytime I need to remove it, I just will buy something when I'm on the road. Anything else that I need in liquids, we just buy where we are. So here's what I keep in my toiletry kit. In this top section, I keep some hair ties and some dental floss and also a measuring tape. In this bottom pocket, I keep a two-sided mirror makeup eraser that I'm currently obsessed with. Again, I use something that is going to stand out so it won't leave it behind in an Airbnb, but you don't need makeup remover. You can just wash your face and this takes off all of your makeup. It's game changing and it goes in the washer and dryer. It's super convenient. I also bought a mini razor from Gillette Venus. It just kind of has a small little handle. Uh, it takes a little bit to get used to, but if I can shave off a little bit of space, I'm happy to do it. And then the SteriPod that just keeps the blade protected. And this is Humankind. Kevin has the same thing, he just didn't show it. This is a bamboo toothbrush and then a holder, which makes it very convenient to dry and just leave out by the sink. Another item from Humankind that we really like is this refillable deodorant. And although this maybe takes up a tiny bit more space, we like the fact that it is refillable and we aren't having to throw away a lot of plastic. The kitsch that I use for my hair is amazing as well. It works really well with Rogaine and it helps to protect hair loss. And I have definitely found that the combination has hit a sweet spot and my hair is growing back. It's made with rice protein. I've been very happy with it. Let's move on to my backpack, which is really the tech bag. <laughs> it's got most of our gear in it for recording and it's missing some things that are currently being used like our light and the big camera. The outside of this bag is really nice because like Judy's, there's two side pockets, one that I keep an umbrella in and one that I keep a water bottle in. These are also convenient because they're magnetic. As a water bottle, I do like these Super Sparrow, so this is the one I'm voting for. Let us know in the comments which one you want for Judy. So the top of my backpack, which is really convenient when it's under an airplane seat, is a little spot where I can keep things like my AirPods and wired headphones if the airline isn't providing them. And I also keep some medicine sometimes, like I have some Advil in here because I had some headaches for a while while we're traveling. So, but that's really convenient to have it all right up front. I also have a white or glasses because somehow glasses oh it's smudged. This is a nomadic 20 liter backpack that also expands to 30 liters. It has a zipper that allows you to expand it to 30 liters, which means we can use it as our full luggage when we go on things like our Nile River cruise. We always took our backpacks. I like that it has this front flap that makes it really easy to get at various things. And those various things are sometimes really critical. Like a battery, Judy and I both have Apple MagSafe batteries that snap onto our phones. I have a Apple charger that works for watch and iPhone. This is also where all these little pockets are. And I love these pockets because they're right at my fingertips. I've got all our cables in here that are needed for everyday use. 
This little compartment is really important. It is RFID safe and it is used for our critical items like our passports and our vaccination books. Like Judy's backpack, this backpack has a pass-through for luggage. I can put it right on top of our luggage, wheel it around, nice sturdy straps and a sturdy handle to grab it quickly when I need to pick it up off the ground. In the back of this, there's space for a computer and a tablet. Judy's taking the load off me a little bit and carrying our iPad. The computer would go in here, iPad in here, very nice. And this case is big enough to hold my 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is a beast of a computer and really heavy. <laughs> and I love it anyway, because I do all our video editing on it and it just crunches through all that 4K video. Let's look in the belly of the beast. As you can see, it's full to the brim. And this is because we have a lot of gear for cameras and lighting and everything else. As with other parts of this case, uh, I love that you can have extra pockets for all the little knickknacks. One thing we use all the time is this little luggage scale. We're always checking to make sure we're under the required weights. And as a reminder, all these things are on our website, on our gear guide page. We'll leave links in the description below to that page. And this is my camera bag. I like to make sure that everything that has to do with the camera stays with the camera, including the small tripod that we use sometimes as a selfie stick or as a desktop tripod, and the softbox that attaches to my key light. Also, we have a microphone from Sony that connects right to our Sony FX30 camera. It's a digital mic, so it captures sound very cleanly. And because it attaches right to the top of the camera, there are no wires to screw up. I rarely have a problem recording things now. And this is our key light. It's very small, packs in my camera bag but it puts out a lot of light, so we don't have to worry about daylight controlling us. We use AirTags to track everything. There's an AirTag in this case, an AirTag in this case, an AirTag into all her cases and our suitcases, so we know where everything is. We try to take everything as carry-on, but sometimes you have to pack the bigger suitcases depending on the airline. We ran across that recently where it's seven kilograms was our limit, it's a hard line. So having AirTags in our suitcases let us track where they were on the delivery to us in the airport. And when you're traveling, you tend to have a lot of gear. And that's what this little case is for. Also a nomadic case. We have a lot of plugs for the various outlets that we go into. And you know, if you've ever traveled with phones and other devices, that batteries run out. So we have another little external battery. It's anchor, it can charge both phones and even a few other devices for us. And in this side pocket, I have a big battery. This is a heavy duty anchor battery, nice display on it, tells us what we have as far as battery power and how much is charging. And the reason I have such a big one is because this can also power my key light and run my camera. So when we're on the go and there's no way to plug in, we can record videos. And even though this is a big looking battery, it's pretty compact for the power that comes out of it. And it is under the guidelines for airports. They have checked this a couple of times at couple different airports and they've cleared it. And Anchor does a good job of supporting their products, so I trust them. As you can see, we have a lot of repeating products that we use all the time. We're brand loyal because when a brand works and they support us, we try to support them too. In addition to this 140 watt battery that I have from Anchor, I also have an Anchor power strip. And that power strip allows me to have 140 watts to power my MacBook Pro 16 inch or power my key light, which needs 140 watts of power, surprisingly. Before we did our redo of a lot of our gear, we were relying on plugs next to our bed or trying to be in a spot in an Airbnb where we could plug into our wall chargers. And that wasn't working out at all. So this has a much longer cable on it, so I can have four devices plugged into it, charging directly, and two more plugs to put other chargers or whatever else into it. And like our two other Anchor batteries, it has a display on it that tells me how much juice everything's using, which makes it really convenient when I'm trying to figure out if something's charging or not. So if you have any packing tips or advice for us, please let us know in the comments. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you aren't already. And the best compliment you can give to us is to share this video with your friends. And check out findinggenuary.com where we have our gear guide that lists everything that we're talking about today. Judy's got some great articles. We've got packing tips and so much more. Until next time. Until next time.